What I want to talk about is specifically mind control that's done on children. Recurring numbers and codes are part of the programming. So the programming goes in with specific codes and also cues. So there's words that activate programming. There's events or traumas that activate programming. And there's number codes that activate programming. So today I want to talk about the number codes because what we're seeing, we're seeing in the popularity of recurring numbers online in the new age, what are called angel numbers by the new age, the popularity of recurring numbers as far as it, it pulling someone in to the internet asking questions, why do I keep seeing this number? That prevalence of that many people that this is happening to means that there's a mystical force that's bringing people to these numbers, that's making it important, that's making the number important to this many people, and that many people are getting online, and they're all going to occult, they're all pointed to occult material. Because when you look up recurring numbers, you will always be pointed to occult material. These things are programming. They're put in place so that as adults, the programming is going to trigger to be awakened. And this is where we have the spiritual awakening, what some of the people are calling the spiritual awakening. And this is what happened to me. So I came through this. I was many, many years in this. I didn't have any recollection that I had gone through trauma-based mind control. It's been a lot of years to have not only had the memories and worked through the traumas, but actually found the evidence. So I want you to really pay attention because this has to do with the beast. It's part of it. There's many things going on that's going to make everyone worship the beast, except the, the very few. They are the ones, of course, that are going to be killed. When the Antichrist comes, the beast comes, He's going to be deceiving, it says, and deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. There's a an alluding to everybody's going to believe this guy, the Antichrist. Why is everyone going to believe it? There's a mystical force operating through this sorcery that pulls you and compels you towards it. And that can be done in many ways. It can happen through recurring numbers. It can happen through symbols, through soul ties. So there's things that compel a person towards Luciferian or New Age ideals, and they know them as a feeling. So it's a sense, it's a feeling, it's it's what's thought to be a spiritual sense and can feel very powerful and wonderful and different. And that's what's the that's how sorcery works. There are a lot of things that were happening through the funding that went to different institutions and organizations that were doing testing and programming on children, this funding went to many different institutions. So there were people that were allowed to apply these types of tests through the 60s, 70s and ongoing. Occultists discovered that children were uniquely dissociative. So these gifted programs sprung up internationally and they targeted kids with MK Ultra programming. And I want to show you some of these examples here coming up of some of the games that the children are asked to play. The conditioning for these kids is to become writers, speakers, and path pavers who will indoctrinate society with the Luciferian propaganda that is in these games. This is done to the unguarded children from the unstable homes. They were in special school programs. They were left with babysitters at church with relatives, some who took oaths to lodges. So there's a, a challenge the gifted child uh, campaign that began. And so these are the types of games that the child would be asked to play and still are. You can find these things on the internet today. So you see the Freemason skull and bones in these games. There's a Knobs M for masonry. You see a labyrinth. 
you see the yin yang programming, the demonic programming, and the actual demons on these boxes. You can see the eye occult symbol. So symbolism is very important to occultists, and this is what's hitting the gifted, sensitive children from the beginning. And then what it leads to is what I'm going to talk about next. There's so many Masonic images that flash in, in the background. The brotherhood and the handshakes and the, the white gloves, the color schemes. I would just have to do videos on that and I, I haven't gone that direction in my work. I, I think a lot of people maybe are already doing that. I would just recommend not going so far into that direction and studying those things just to know that you may not have gone through formal programming. It's different for different people. So the 1111 may be all the people that are supposed to be going through this spiritual awakening, awakening to this false God, awakening to this false Christ. That's the program. And then within the program, there's different numbers of different programs for what you specifically would be assigned to doing. And that would be your specific program number. It could be you're supposed to be a writer about the women's movement. Or your program could be you are supposed to invent a technology. It could be anything that is a Luciferian solution to what we see as social problems. It could be environmental solutions. It could be you become a guru. You could become a clothing designer where you set a trend that has a lot of symbolism in that, uh, programming within the clothing, all kinds of things. So your number would be related to that programming that would be awakened at a certain time, from what I see, in a certain place also. So you may feel yourself drawn to certain locations for no reason really, or just compelled to suddenly move and live in an area. Once moving in that area, maybe change how you look or change how you think, maybe even change your career. People that are very sensitive have a specific type of mind control. Typically, it'll be more towards helping unify, helping bring peace. There'll be an association with environmentalism, animal rights, helping causes, doing things with the UN, maybe being interested in politics and one world government, maybe interested in unifying religions, maybe interested in writing books, new age books or channel books, inventing new faiths or branches of different faiths or different evolvements of different faiths, trying to evolve faiths. A lot of the stuff is based around empathy and feeling sorry for a certain group of people or certain self-reliance messages. I know about programming triggers. You do go sort of go into a trance or you feel a force pulling on you. People that have had a past that have been in other paths, other faith paths, other spiritual paths have experienced a pull or a feeling in some way, especially going into mysticism and the esoteric and new age and energy healing and things, because there's a, there's a force that comes upon the people who are in agreement with that, with that spiritual force, they call it in. And so it becomes part of their life and it pulls on them. In Revelation, the Antichrist really is described as having this power, the supernatural power I have had this feeling that he's going to have some ability to trigger this feeling within people so they're already in agreement with this force. And I don't know if you'd be able to resist it without really knowing the true Jesus Christ. And when you get provided solutions for breaking mind control, something I found in an article that said, many therapists believe that a transcendental experience, a feeling that it is a good world and one is part of it, is a curative experience in itself. I would note, especially if you have a recurring number, if you have a number that always comes up in your life, a lot of people say they see the number 1111, and that definitely is, from my perspective, 
a turning on of a program that's definitely, to me, a trigger that's put into people. So everybody sees that number, but the ones who see it and it matters to them, that's because that is programming that has been put into that child. I could go on forever, and I'm sure I left a lot of things open. Just I want to give you hope, and uh, God will bless you if you let him. Bye for now.